Welcome to the Lead More Podcast. I'm your host, John T. Meyer. The Lead More Podcast is the show where we sit down with leaders of today to help inspire and create more leaders for tomorrow. Because I believe the world needs more leaders. And if you're listening to this, I want you to be the next one. All it takes is raising your hand, stepping up, and acting like a true leader. So in this show, we learn about what it what it means to be a true leader, both from, from leaders themselves and sometimes from me. And this episode is going to be one more of those, another one. I know I did a short little one last week before my big hike, but I had enough people ask me, how did it go? What was it like? What did you learn? That I decided I'm going to do one more short sort of mini pod, solo pod about the 29029 hike. So go listen to last week's if you're curious what it was. It's a short episode. It's called 29029 Everstein, where I had to go up a ski hill 13 times, ride the gondola down, do that 13 times in Utah to get to the equivalent of summiting Mount Everest, 29,029 feet. So what did I learn? Well, spoiler alert, I finished. (laughs) If you followed me on Instagram, I documented the journey. I finished. I got the red hat, got to wear the red bib, uh, and I made it. And it was definitely physically the hardest thing I've ever done, but probably even more so mentally. And I have three big, big takeaways from doing this event. The first one is limits. We as humans always put limits on ourselves. Physical limits, mental limits, social limits. Our brain, our body tells us, well, we're not supposed to do that. We can't go that far. We can't meet that person. We can't get into that room. We can't have that job title. And one of the speakers, they have speakers before the event starts, Chad Wright. He's an ex-Navy SEAL and now an ultra marathon athlete and endurance athlete. He said, your tongue is the rudder that steers your life. Your tongue is the rudder that steers your life. What you say that little muscle in between your mouth impacts and, and drives what you believe, what you accomplish, and what you do. I thought that was an incredibly powerful way to say it. You might not think the tongue does much, but how what you say becomes what you believe, and your brain starts to think that, and off you go in a negative cycle or hopefully in a positive cycle. So the first thing was just reframing what your limits are. I didn't think I could hike 29,000 feet. I don't think I trained enough. I didn't think I was prepared. I wasn't sure. To be honest, even before we left, my wife said, it's okay if you don't finish. We want you to be safe and we'll love you either way. Which, super grateful for that, for Paige saying that and reminding me that. But also, moving past one of the first things our speaker said on Thursdays, put quitting off the table. You will not quit. You will either get that red hat or you physically will just have to stop. And once we started thinking that and saying that, so at 6 a.m. on Friday in the dark and the cold when we were starting and you look up at that mountain and you can't even see the top for the first summit, you start to move past what your limits are. So lesson one, reframe your limits. Lesson two, community. The power of community speaking of limits, is so much greater than I realized it could be. So from an event planning standpoint, I'll tell Addie, who used to be on the podcast about this, such a great touch. They make you wear these bibs at the event. And on the front of the bib is your name. And on the back of the bib is your name. And that's super smart because as you're hiking up, taking the gondola down, stopping at an aid station to eat a banana or eat some nuts or drink some water or Gatorade, you see the names of all these people, 260 people in total from all over the country, some all, some outside of the country. And you start to just become a community. As I'm hiking and maybe passing somebody who uh, I met, you know, Lisa, who's a grandmother. And I don't know much about Lisa. I know she's from Florida. But as I walk from behind her and I see her name, I say, hey, Lisa, you know, keep up the good work. Great job. You're looking strong. Or Peter, who I ended up doing the whole second summit with. Peter 65 He's an attorney in Florida, but now he's moving to Colorado. And he and his wife at 65 both finished it. They beat me even faster than me. So these names, you know, all it takes is the sound of someone's name to start making a connection. So you say, hey, Joe, hey, hey, Rich, hey, hey, Tommy, these people, they became friends for these 36 hours. 
And where are you from? Why'd you decide to do this? You know, what got you excited? What got you motivated? Do you have family? Do you have kids? And all of a sudden, these people feel like your family for 36 hours, all chasing this common goal. And the coolest part, this young kid, 19 years old, finished first. He goes done, I think, in about 14 or maybe 15 hours, um, Friday night. He went up. I think he maybe rested for a little while, took a shower, and stood at the top the entire remaining day on Saturday, giving people high fives, cheering people on. We all went up the gondola about three o'clock and for the final three hours stood there and clapped and high fived and cheered people as they came to the finish line. We were a community just for 36 hours. It just lived in that moment for 36 hours. But, you know, I've connected online on social media with a couple of folks that I've met and, and we will always share that experience and maybe even have a relationship or a connection or a friendship beyond but the power of community physically, online, whatever context your community is, even this community of the podcast, right, is incredibly powerful. And that can be what helps push you beyond your limits or it helps you reframe what's possible or it helps you get through tough times emotionally, physically, whatever it may be. So always build your community, foster and nurture your community, and lean on your community when you need it. Use it and know that people are always there for you. That was my second takeaway. The third and probably the most uh, impactful for me, the takeaway, is what I'll call moment. Live in the moment. So one of the lines that they used on Thursday before we, we hiked was, be where your feet are. Wherever you are, be in your shoes, be in the moment, be in that step. Take this hike one step at a time. Not one summit at a time, not one hour at a time, just one step at a time. I use Strava. uh, It's a fitness tracking app. I think I ended up hiking 36 miles that day. 29,000 feet, 36 miles, 13 summits. No idea how many steps I take in a mile, but thousands, right? Hundreds, maybe tens of thousands of steps were taken. And what happened, the hardest part of this race, it was physically hard, but it was more so mentally hard because you'd look up, you couldn't see the top. You'd start to think about 13. You'd start to think about how long it took you to do the first. Will it take me that long to do the second? Okay, if I get three done, then when should I eat lunch? Or will I end up sleeping? You know, the clock is ticking. How long will it take me from get to the first aid station to the second aid station? You start to look ahead. You start to worry about the future. You start to think about things that haven't even happened or may not even happen. And I equated that very much to my own life, thinking or worrying about work, about my girls, about them becoming, you know, about Margot going to kindergarten, starting school, about, you know, do we have enough savings? Are we doing, are we on the right track for our retirement? Are we, you know, Is this the right home for us to live in? Or, you know, whatever things it is that you start to worry about the future, things that haven't even happened or come true yet, just let it go, right? Live in the moment, live in the day, live in the present. Put away the phone. Be present, be with your family, be with your community. And so that analogy of be where your feet are, taking it one step at a time and the hike perfectly applies to life one step at a time. So that was an incredibly powerful lesson for me, probably the most powerful, most powerful and something that I hope to bring back and apply here to my, my life. And so in asking and recap, what was it like? How was it? You summited, congratulations, great work. I learned about limits. I learned about the power of community and the importance of the moment. And for that, I am forever grateful. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, at John T. Meyer. Shoot me a message. I'd love to talk to you about it. Happy to catch you up on it and let you know more if you're ever thinking about doing it. That was my experience at 29029 Everstein. Learned a lot. It'll make me a better leader. It'll make me a better person. All right, that's it for this episode of the Lead More Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this one, breaking down the event. Reminder, we drop new episodes every Thursday of the Lead More Podcast. You can find them wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify. Just subscribe, click follow, leave us a review. Thanks for listening.
Take care and be well.